All right, so these warm-up questions, I'll just direct you to watch the other video. Um, these are great practice. You can look at the key as well. I just want to jump straight into um, 7.3, so factoring trinomials. So three terms, and we want to figure out how to separate these uh, into two binomial terms. So that may have not made any sense, and that's cool. It doesn't matter. Uh, we got plenty of examples to look at, so I'm just going to dive right in to the first one. Um, take a moment to read this, um, but we can also just bank on doing practice problems. So, how do you, quote, factor this? So, factoring for trinomials looks like taking it and writing, let's say this was the answer. That is what we're looking for. We're looking to write it from a trinomial into a set of two binomials. Um, this is really nice because when we deal with quadratics, writing it in this form, like factored form, um, is really beneficial because we can see certain features of the graph, like the x-intercepts or, you know, when our cost is zero, you know, important features like that. So this is a good skill we need to develop. So how do you do it? Well, you're going to look first at this number here, which is going to be positive 8. And we have to think about numbers that multiply to 8, that are factor pairs, like we did at the beginning of the year. So 1 and 8 and 2 and 4 are the ones that come to my mind. So we have to pick one of these over here. So the answer to this is this one. And then those numbers go in here. Okay? That's the answer. That's it. But, but why is that the answer? We can check our answer. Remember how we... Uh, distributed this last time. So x squared plus 4x plus 2x plus 8. See how we got 2 times 4 is 8 ends up being our last term. That's why we're looking at factor pairs of 8 because that's what generates this last term. Okay, And this of course combines to make 6x. So we got it right. All right. So this is the case where everything's positive, right? We got a plus sign here, plus sign here. Um, and when you have that, it is going to be a plus sign here and a plus sign here every time. Okay. Okay, let's look at another one, and then we're going to talk about some signs. So this one. You always, always can set it up like this when this is a 1. You see how there's no number out front? You can always do this. And then you have to figure out what signs, plus or minus, and what numbers go here. So there's kind of like four blanks. Okay? And you can figure out what the signs are by just looking at these signs. So a negative sign means actually determines it for you. The only way that's going to work is with a plus and a minus. Now why is that true? Let's look over here for another second. When we multiplied the 2 and the 4 on that last distribute, we got an 8. But if we want that last number to be negative, we have to have it that this is positive negative. Because that's the only way. Because remember, a negative times a negative is a positive. Positive times a positive is a positive. The only way we can guarantee negative is if we do plus times minus. So we're also going to look at the factors of 48, but it is minus 48 here. So there's a lot of these. Oops. So if you're curious how to do these, or um, the quickest way, not the quickest, but the most reliable way is just to take your calculator and, you know, it, one is always uh, one of them. 
And then you try 2. You know, on your calculator, you do 48 divided by 2. It's 24. And then you try 3. 48 divided by 3 is 16. And then you try 4. 48 divided by 4 is 12. 5 doesn't work. 6 does work. So this one's got a bunch of them. But you can just kind of try those numbers. Okay? And so the answer to this one, so all five of these are, are possible, right? They all multiply to 48. But that's where this comes in. They have to multiply to minus 48, but they have to add to 2. So this is a plus here. So that means, see how we have these middle terms over here? Um, the signs that we pick change the signs of the middle term. So the fact that this is a plus 2 means that this number here is bigger than this number. So this is a little number, little number, and this other one's a big number because the positive dominates in the middle here. So I have to pick, so what does that mean? That means that the negative sign goes with the small numbers like this. Now those multiply to minus 48. Okay. So which one of those factor pairs adds to two? This one. So the six goes here and the eight goes here. And that's it. Let's double check. x squared minus six x plus eight x minus 48. That would be me doing this thing. Distributing. Is that right? Yeah. It's the same thing. Okay. So now is a good time to go down to here. And I want to write this. This is fine, the way it's written. I want to write it in a different way, too. Um, basically, if you have double plus, you're going to pick double plus. If you have a minus and a plus, you're going to pick double minus. Because this plus is still guaranteed. Because a minus times a minus is a plus. And if you have the last one being negative, like the problem we just did, you can start off by choosing the positive and the negative sign. Let's do another one. So based on what I just said, we got a plus sign here, which means that this is either minus minus or plus plus, because it's all about that last this. It's all about this final distribute. A plus times a plus is a plus. But if we look at another example like this, we would do the middle terms, blah, blah, blah. Minus times a minus is a plus. So this is going to be minus minus. Why? Because minus minus makes a plus. But my middle terms need to be negative because my middle is negative. So I got to choose negative signs. So we are doing this. All right, so now that we have, we just got to pick numbers now. It's, I think the signs can be kind of tough. You got to practice that and really get this in your head. You got to know that, right? And just knowing, like, just practicing that and knowing that will, will really help you a lot with this. Because now you just have to look at the factors of 10, which are pretty small. And you just stick in the numbers that have a middle term of minus 7. So this would be correct. This is the answer. Because they add to 7, right? The middle term is going to be negative 7. Those have the same starting signs? Yup. 
I know right off the bat that this is this. And I'm going to try 24. So I know 1 works and 2 normally works. I'll try 3 and 4. A little trick, uh, you never have to go past the square root of the number. So around 5. So you only have to try 1 through 5. You don't have to try um, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You know, you can stop uh, at about the square root of the number. It's a little uh, trick. Okay. So which one of these works? Which one of them adds to 11? And this one does. Done. And those middle terms would be minus 11x. And finally, we have the negative at the end. Negative at the end always means plus or minus. So don't be confused. Even though it's double negative in the in the formula, our answer is not minus minus. You know, this one down here is always flip signs because that's the only way to get minus fifty. You know, is if one of the numbers is negative. So fifty has a lot of factors too. Um, two works and five works. So now we have to think about dominance, right? Who is dominating here? Is it the negatives that are the, the, for the big numbers or is it the positives that are for the big numbers? Um, negatives dominated this. Somehow, when all the dust settled, we were left with a negative number. So the negative numbers were bigger. So when I go and adjust my signs in my table, I need to make sure that my big numbers have negatives. Why? Because the middle term is negative. So it was dominated by a negative number. And it has to be 5. So which one of these adds to 5 or minus 5? Um, this one does. Typically, th towards the bottom of your list is normally your answer. Um, so minus 10 and the 5 goes here. So let me show you what I mean by dominating. If I factor this, or if I distribute this out, out of these two middle terms, the negative dominated. The negative is the bigger one. Okay. All right. So practice these problems. Please practice the problems before you continue on with the video. Okay. So we're going to do a um, some factor break. Um, factor by grouping, um, and this will extend us to the rest, the end of the video. So let's again just kind of jump into some examples. So now you'll see these problems have increased in difficulty a lot because now the A is not one. So we cannot start off the problem like this anymore because there's a two here, and the way it's written right now, it's going to end up being x squared is the first thing. But that's not right. So we have to have a whole new attack strategy. And the way we're going to do it is with what's called the AC method. And it always sets up like this. I like to draw the boxes. I think you should too. Because this is like a, it's a puzzle. So you got AC. Remember A x squared plus bx plus c. We want to multiply 2 times negative 5. It's negative 10. And b is 9. So you want to look for factors of negative 10 that add to 9. So 10, I just do this as kind of like a brainstorm for some options. Um, 1 in 10 seems um, likely. So you see how this is almost like a little factor tree. Those multiply to negative 10, but they add to 9. 
So once you have that, this translates to this, 10x minus x equals 9x. We're doing like a little substitution here. Okay, so first two, uh, and then you might be able to guess what we're going to do now. How about some factor by grouping? We got a 2x in common here, leaving me with x and 5. And we have a negative, so I'd like to pull that out. And I'd like to pull out... the entire binomial term. We did this in the last video. Okay, There is a 1 here as well. That's it. It's really not that bad. So I'm going to talk through this next one, and then I'm just going to do the other ones without talking. Because I think um, my talking can be kind of distracting sometimes. I just want you to see just how it's done and almost like you can talk through it in your head while I'm doing it. Um, but let's talk through this one first. So draw our little puzzle. So we got a number and its factors add to a number B. So we fill in what we know. We're AC. AC is A times C, by the way. Okay, so, oh, this is our, it's our, it's our, um, it's our vanilla, right? It's our double positive, meaning there's no negatives involved at all, which is amazing. So I don't even need to think about, you know, flipping which one's positive, which one's negative. I don't have to do that at all. Um, I'm just going to look at um, 20, nope, 36, has a lot of factors. We got 1 and 36, 2, 18, 3, 12, 4, 9, and 6, 6. We got to pick one that when you add them together, it equals 20. And I think it would be this one. So when we go up, and all this is doing right here is it telling us how to make this change in green. It's kind of like a formula you know, that we use and toss that in. So we got an X in common and we have a six in common. And now we have a binomial term in common. So this is gonna come out to the front. All right, so and also, too, there's other great ways, slight variations to do AC method. Um, I would definitely recommend that you watch as many YouTube videos as you can. I mean, they're all going to be really helpful. All right, I'm just going to say just a little tiny bit as I go. Um, okay, so here we go. So the one thing I, I wanted to add to this is it is, oh, no, it's actually plus, all right, never mind, never mind. And it's plus 30. Okay. So we do have a special thing happening here. We have a negative here, but we have a positive here. So we need to have some negative signs happening here somewhere or else we're not gonna get negative 17. So I'm gonna pick these and let me show you what's gonna happen. Two 
X. Three. Take a look at the last one. Okay, so this one is a little bit much does have a bunch of factors, but I'll try and be more generous and not give you one like this. What dominates? Negatives dominate. So if negatives dominate, I need my negatives on my big numbers. Which is why it's so helpful to write these in order. Um, so which of these add to minus 5? Oops. We completed the puzzle, so now we're going to do a substitution. So see how this is the same as this? We're breaking up the middle term to do factor by grouping. It's a really cool strategy. I think 7 goes into both of these. Okay, so you kind of made it to the end. You got some more practice to do down here. Um, and we're gonna do more practice in class too, so just keep trying this stuff. Um, I know it's a little different. Um, I have you doing two different methods. One is kind of like a guess and check up here. Down here it's much more um, systematic. I don't have anything else for you right now. So thanks for making it.